Hi, this is Dr. Ankita from XLMRCOG, and I would be talking about antenatal corticosteroids administration as per the new Green Top guidelines. So, what are the benefits of antenatal corticosteroid administration? A course of antenatal corticosteroids given within seven days prior to the preterm birth can reduce the risk of perinatal and neonatal death and respiratory distress syndrome. What are the benefits of corticosteroids in a planned caesarean birth at term? Now, as we all know, the NICE guidelines recommend that planned caesarean section as far as possible be done after 39 weeks of gestation as far as possible now the question arises if it has to be done before 39 weeks of gestation should antenatal corticosteroids be administered in such a case so for women undergoing caesarean at term between 37 to 38.6 weeks we need to take an informed decision explaining the mother the risks and benefits of administration of corticosteroids at term. So what are those? What are the things that we need to explain to the mother prior to administering corticosteroids at term? It may reduce admission to the NNU for respiratory mobility. It is uncertain if there is any reduction in RDS, in transient tachypnea of the newborn or and in your admission overall. It may result in harm to the neonate, which includes hypoglycemia, and there is a potential for developmental delay as well. As far as administration of corticosteroids between 35 to 36 weeks, 36.6 weeks is concerned, then again, we need to weigh the benefits versus the risks. At what gestation should antenatal corticosteroids be discussed and offered? So if the lady is less than 24 weeks of gestation, it has to be individualized because here we are concerned whether they, the fetus would be viable at all. Between 24 to 34.6 weeks of gestation, steroids should be administered in case of imminent preterm delivery, in case of premature rupture of membranes or a planned preterm pre birth. So when the delivery is imminent, it is better to administer steroids as close to the delivery as possible because the effects or the beneficial effects of steroids last for seven days only. So what are the risks and benefits of antenatal corticosteroids? Between 22 to 34.6 weeks, it is highly likely to reduce perinatal mortality neonatal mortality and neonatal respiratory distress. It is also likely to reduce the incidence of IDH, intraventricular hemorrhage, developmental delay in childhood. Reductions in these parameters are likely if the birth happens 24 to 48 hours after starting treatment. If you give the first dose today, the second dose tomorrow, the maximum effect of antenatal corticosteroid administration is likely to happen 24 hours after the second dose. Some benefit is also seen within the within 24 hours of the first dose as well. This reduction in the neonatal respiratory morbidity is seen to last for seven days after the treatment is started. So if the pregnancy continues and the delivery happens within seven days of antenatal corticosteroid administration, the benefit is likely to be seen. If the pregnancy continues, after administering corticosteroids and the delivery happens seven days after the administration of corticosteroids, then the benefit is likely to pass off or it is not likely to be beneficial. What are the harmful effects of steroids? It is likely to affect the maternal glucose tolerance and as such result in maternal hypoglycemia, which can last for five days and may result in neonatal hypoglycemia as the blood sugar levels in the mother rise. It is likely to reduce birth weight if birth is delayed for more than seven days. So the benefit is going to wear off. Not just that, if the birth gets delayed, then the birth weight of the baby may be less than expected after administration of corticosteroids if delivery delay is delayed beyond seven days of the last dose. 
So no benefits are likely to be seen if birth is more than seven days after starting treatment, as we already saw. It may increase psychiatric and developmental problems in the baby if they are born at term and may result in neonatal hypoglycemia. So what are the benefits between 35 and 36.6 weeks? It may reduce respiratory need for respiratory support. As far as harms are concerned, yes, there is a possibility of neonatal hypoglycemia and it may increase psychiatric and behavioral diagnosis if children born, if children are born at term. Before planned cesarean section, as we have already seen, it may decrease NNU admission because of respiratory morbidity, but may reduce the educational attainment at school age. Do we give a rescue dose of corticosteroids after the treatment is over and seven days have elapsed? It may reduce the need for respiratory support, but it is also likely to reduce the birth weight. Then coming to certain special circumstances. As far as mul multiple pregnancy is concerned, Offer targeted antenatal corticosteroids for early birth in line with recommendations for single tits. That means just by virtue of it being a multiple pregnancy, do not offer steroids. If there are indications or if there are risk factors for preterm birth or she's likely to be delivered preterm, only then you need to administer steroids. Risks and benefits in, in multiple pregnancy are uncertain. Routine untargeted doses should not be given. Untargeted routine doses, that means just by virtue of it being multiple pregnancy, do not administer steroids. Diabetes is not a contraindication. Insulin to be administered according to protocol because steroids is likely to increase the blood sugar levels. So you may have to administer insulin or adjust the doses of insulin in a woman who is diabetic. For women undergoing cesarean section at 37 to 38 weeks, you need to explain to them the risk of neonatal hypoglycemia because this is particularly the case when there is diabetes already. So as far as small for gestational age babies are concerned, corticosteroids are to be given if preterm birth is likely and there is little evidence to suggest that steroids would perform differently in babies with growth restriction compared to the overall preterm population. As far as PPROM is concerned, if there is PPROM and you think that the delivery is likely to happen soon, then it is always better to give steroids. So what is the optimum dose and route of administration of a course of antenatal corticosteroids? 24 milligrams dexamethasone phosphate is given intramuscularly in two doses of 12 milligrams, 24 hours apart, or four divided doses, six milligram, 12 hours apart. An alternative is 24 milligrams betamethasone sodium phosphate or acetate mixture given intramuscularly in two doses, 12 milligrams, 24 hours apart. A Cochrane systematic review found that dexamethasone compared with betamethasone reduced the risk of IVH, that is intraventricular hemorrhage, is cheaper and does not require refrigeration. How long after administration is a course of antenatal corticosteroids most effective? As we have seen already, antenatal corticosteroid use reduces neonatal death when the first dose is given within 48 hours prior to birth. So you give the dose today, the first dose, the maximum effect would be after 48 hours of the first dose or after 24 hours of the second dose. Benefits are also seen when the first dose is given within 24 hours of birth and antenatal corticosteroid should still be given if birth is expected within that, this time. So you know that there's a patient who's come in preterm labor and she is getting good uterine contractions and she is likely to deliver within 24 hours. You still give antenatal corticosteroids because there is some benefit even after or even within 24 hours of the first dose of corticosteroids. Antenatal corticosteroids are most effective at reducing RDS, RDS in pregnancies 
where birth occurs between 24 hours and 7 days of administration of the second dose of antenatal corticosteroids. So we have already seen this. So what are the contraindications? There are no definite contraindications as such, but if the birth is immediate birth is necessary because of a maternal or fetal condition that warrants an immediate birth, you should not delay the birth because you want to administer corticosteroids. For example, if the patient has come with say a uh, complication of preeclampsia, like she's come with eclampsia, you should not be delaying birth because you want to administer corticosteroids. In the presence of systemic infection, the potential beneficial effects of antenatal corticosteroids intended for the baby are to be balanced against the effect of exacerbating the severity of systemic infection, both for the woman and her baby. So if there is an infection, it may exacerbate the infection because it is steroids. So that has to be weighed against the beneficial effect of steroids on the baby. In what circumstances should an antenatal corticosteroid course be repeated? Do we repeat if, the, if you administer the uh, antenatal corticosteroids because of likelihood of preterm delivery, but then the delivery is delayed to more than seven days when you know that the effect of corticosteroids is likely to wean off? In such a case, do we administer another rescue dose? So what has been found from studies is that there is no reduction in serious morbidity or long-term benefits if you do repeat the dose in case the delivery is delayed. There is limited evidence to recommend repeat courses of antenatal corticosteroids if a woman remains at imminent risk of preterm birth seven days after administration of antenatal corticosteroids. However, a further course may reduce the need for neonatal respiratory support. The maximum number of corticosteroid courses given in any pregnancy should not exceed three because with multiple doses, the babies born are likely to be smaller. So you need to explain these factors to the mother that if you do repeat courses and the pregnancy is delayed further, the baby is likely to grow smaller than otherwise but a repeat course of corticosteroids given after seven days of the previous course in case of preterm delivery may reduce the need for respiratory support for the baby. So these things are to be explained to the patient and an informed consent would have to be taken about repeating the course of antenatal corticosteroids. Thank you everyone. Happy studying and I hope you have found this useful.